57 again. All right, I'm Officer Caillou. All right, what's your name, ma'am? Well, they call me Kathleen. I mean, my name is Kathleen. They call me Kathleen. Kathleen, they call you. Which you want me to call you? Cat. Cat. All right, Cat. I'm Caillou. All right, read that again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 57 and verse 1. The righteous perish, and no man lay it to heart. So, let me ask you this about you. You said your nephew, that was the first one you mentioned to us, right? Two days ago, all right? Okay, I'm listening. All right, two days ago, and we... We sorry. Stop the nigga. You understand? Don't worry about that. She, she, you know, if you don't entertain her, she, she will, she will get. You know, if you don't give her the attention that she wants, she'll just leave. You understand? Just ignore her. Just ignore her. You all right? All right. You all right? You all right? Read it again. The righteous perish, and no man take lay it to heart. And merciful men are taken away. So merciful men are taken away, right? We hope that your son was righteous or your nephew was righteous, right? Now, if your nephew was righteous, it's something that you may not know about him when he dies. If he was righteous, the Bible is going to tell you what I'm talking about. All right, read on. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. That means that there's much more evil to come in this, in this world than what we've experienced already. Right. All right? So we're getting prepared for what right now? What's coming. What's coming right now? When you watch the news, you see what's going on. Death. What type of death? By what? Death, death by what? Violence. By gun violence. It's more than gun violence that's coming to America. Right. You understand? It's a lot going on in the world. I don't know if you have been keeping up with the news. There's some things stirring up overseas right now. Bring it out. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. All right, so there's, there's, these are little peanuts these, these uh, little niggas got in these ghettos. These little guns they got with they, with they switches and they drums. You know what I'm talking about? All they, 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 and they, they AR-15s, they assault rifles and all of that. That's peanuts com compared to what's coming to America. It's, it's nuclear bombs coming here to destroy this place. And it's going to destroy a lot more than a, a block, a street, right, right. a neighborhood. It's going to destroy a lot more than that. Right. It's going to lay this whole country flat. It's going it's to wipe all of these skyscrapers, sky skyscrapers down. Everything is going to fall to the ground that you see, as you know it. Everything is going to be on fire, burning in flames. This will be the lake of fire. That's the prophecy. You understand? So there's a lot more danger to come on this earth than what you've experienced that's what I'm trying to show you. So the righteous, the ones that die, all right, what we see as an untimely death, you understand? Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes those brothers and sisters are being saved from the evil that's to come on this earth. You understand what I'm saying? Read that again. None considering that the righteous shall be is taken away from the evil to come. So the righteous that die before Christ comes back are being saved from what? From the evil when? That, that exists right now? And what else? And what else? Evils that's to come. Because there's more evil to come on this world than what we're experiencing right now. How did your nephew, how did he pass, if you don't mind me asking? Okay. All right, so that was of the Lord, right? He was born with that, that sickness, that, that disease? He got it at the age of 20 something? Okay, how old was he? 34. Okay, okay, so he was still a young man. He was almost, you know, the scriptures say about an age. Can you give me that in Psalms? You know what I want? Can somebody look it up? 70 years? All right, so your son, he was, My nephew. your nephew, I'm sorry, your nephew, he was almost, he was almost over the hump. You know what the hump is, right? Nah, you see, we think it's 50, but it ain't 50. See, I'm almost at the hump right now. <laughs> Once you get to the hump, you're on the way down. You understand? <laughs> All right, so, so you over the hump. You understand? You over the hump. He, he over the hump. You know, he over the hump, too. You know what I'm saying? Read what you got. <laughs> the book of Psalms, chapter 90, and verse 10. Yeah. The days of our years are three score years and ten. So the scriptures say the days of what? The days of our years. The days of our years, meaning how long we live on this earth today. Come on. Are three score. Score is 20 years. So three score is 60 years, right? Come on. Years and ten. And ten plus ten. That's 70 years. We got 70 years to live on this earth. Right? Come on. And if by reason of strength. And if by reason of strength, meaning you eat good, you exercise, right? 
You saying your prayers three times a day. You keeping God's commandments. You understand? You righteous. You not breaking the Sabbath on Saturday, going out to buy crab, shrimp, and lobster. You understand? Going to Walmart and Food Lion to buy your groceries on Saturday. We ain't supposed to be doing that, right? We're not supposed to be doing that. So if we're righteous and we're taking care of ourselves, the scriptures say we got how long? Three score years and ten. Come on. And if by reason of strength. And if by reason of strength, come on. They be four score years. They be four score. How many is four score? That's 80 years. So the, the scriptures say we got how long to live? My mom was we got, she was 79? She's 79. She's 79 right now. So, so guess what? She's living by reason of strength right now. You understand? Because she was given 70 years. Lord say, look, most people on this earth is going to live 70 years. All right? And if, if I have mercy on you, you might live to be 80. Anything after 80, you need to be giving all praises to the Most High. That's right. You understand? Anything after 80, you need to be giving all praises to the Most High. Okay, the all praises to the Most High. That's a long life to live, right? That's a long life to live. Hopefully, the legacy that they left is worth honoring the Most High for it. You understand? Hopefully, the things they did on this earth is worth. Lord, thank you for sending that spirit to this earth. You understand? Thank you. Thank you for sending this, that spirit to this earth. They, 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 they've done many things to keep me from evil. Hopefully, that's what you recognize and remember that spirit for, right? Hopefully, that's what you recognize and remember that spirit for. All right, was that it on that? Come on. Yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow. You know what that mean? That mean even, it, it, even if you live to be 100 years old, right? The time that you live on this earth, is it going to be easy? Mm -mm. It's not going to be easy. It's not easy, right? Even, what if you got a lot of money? Is it easy? It still ain't easy. You understand? It's, it's not if you a black man, not if you an Israelite. Teach up. Not if you an Israelite. It's gonna be it's gonna be very difficult. Right. Don't matter how much money you got, because you know why? You say it again. Money is the root of all evil. Money's the root of all evil, but you'll never rise above your people. You'll never rise above your people. So you can have all the money in the world, live to be a hundred years old, but guess what? These other nations still look at you as what? A nigga. <laughs> still a nigga. You see what I'm saying? So the scriptures say that. Read that last part again. Yet is that strength, labor, and sorrow. Labor and sorrow. You understand? That's how we live on this earth. We got to work hard. And at the end of the day, we still depressed. Right. We still trying to get high. Right. We still smoking and drinking. Right. At the end of the day. You understand? At the end of the day. Why? Because we have sorrow. That's what this brother was bringing out in Proverbs. Yeah, right? Right there. Right. You say you work over there? I work right there. Right. Right. I, I understand. I understand. Yeah, but it's, it's a, the life that we live is, 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 is a hard life. Right? It's a hard life because of, because of our sin. Because of the sin of our forefathers. You understand? Give me a uh, Sirach chapter 30. Verse 23 or 38. Verse 38. 38, 23. Let the dead. I'm doing the best I can. Right? Yeah, read that. Listen to this, sister. Come on. The book of Sirach, chapter 38 and verse 23. When the dead is at rest, let his remembrance rest. You know what that means? Read it again. When the dead is at rest. The scriptures say when the dead is at rest. Come on. Let his remembrance rest. Let his remembrance do what? Rest. That's, you know what that means? We're not going to speak evil about nobody that's, that's, that's dead and passed on. We're not going to do that. You understand? But guess what? You still got breath in your lungs. Right? A, a, a dog that's alive is better than a, a dead lion. Did you know that? The Bible taught me that. I'm going to say it again. A dog, like a little chihuahua, right? The ones that don't nobody like. Yeah, they always barking, always think they're going to, you know what I'm talking about? They bark at everybody. Like, they got the biggest heart in the world. As soon as you jump in, they run. They run. Then they back up and start barking at you some more. That little dog is better than a big, mighty lion with a big, maimed king of the jungle that's dead. That little dog. You understand? So we're going to deal with the souls out here that still got life in them. You understand? And we're going to we gonna let the remembrance of those that's passed on, we're going to let that rest. Read it again. When the dead is at rest, let his remembrance rest. We're not going to speak evil of anybody. 
You understand? That's been passed on. We're going to let their remembrance cease. May the Lord have mercy upon their soul. If it be his will. You understand? If he was righteous, he not dead at all. He not dead at all if he was righteous. You understand? Read what you got. Yeah, verse 2. The book of Isaiah, chapter 57 and verse 2. He shall enter into peace. This is, we talking about the righteous that's passed on. He shall enter into peace. We call that the heavens, right? Come on. They shall rest in their beds. There, there go that word again, right? They shall rest in their beds. Come on. Each one walking. Doing what? Walking. Doing what? Walking. That, what that mean if he walking? That mean he's still, no, he's He's walking. He's not here because you can't see him. He in the heaven, he's walking with the Lord. You understand? If he was righteous, that's what the scriptures say. So you know what we come out here to do? To teach all of these people who haven't been taken away from this earth righteousness. We come out here to teach them God's commandments. You understand? So that in the day of their death, we pray that the Lord will have mercy on their soul because we taught them to keep God's commandments. And they did it. They learned and they applied those things to their life. They changed. They didn't stay the same. You understand? That's what we come out here to teach all of these people. Come on. I'm one of them. Walking in his uprightness. Oh, you say you're one of them, right? All right. Give me uh, 2 Ezra chapter 10. All right. You say you're one of them. All praise to the Most High. All right. I'm going to tell you a story. The Bible's going to tell you a story. All right. Is that what I want? It's either chapter 10 or chapter 11. Verse 1. Yep. Second Edges chapter 10 verse 1. Read that. The book of Second Edges chapter 10 and verse 1. And it came to pass that when my son was entered into his wedding chamber, he fell down and died. Damn. You heard that? You heard that? This is the day of his wedding. You hear what the Bible say happened? He fell down and what happened to him? He died. He died. Come on. Then we all overthrew the lights and all my neighbors rose up to comfort me. So that, that, that woman was sad, right? Very sad. And she had friends that were there to comfort her, right? Come on. So I took my rest until the second day at night and it came to pass when they had all left off to comfort me to the end I might be quiet. Right, so her friends eventually, what do you think they did? They had to go home. They couldn't stay there forever with her. They had to go back to captivity too. Some of them probably worked at the grocery store. You understand? If they, if they ain't go to work, what you think happened? They lost their job, right? Because they living in sorrow too. Come on. Then rose I up by night and fled and came hither into this field. Then she left. She went away into a field alone. Well, nobody around, right? Come on. As thou seest. And I do not know now purpose not to return into the city. She said, I'm going to stay out here forever. I ain't going back to the city. That's how depressed and sad I am. All right. So you can't let your sorrow do that to you. You understand? You can't let your sorrow take you there. You understand what I'm saying? You can't do that. Come on. But here to stay. Because this is how we feel. We, sometimes when we get sad, we want to go to run to a corner. You understand? We want to get away from everybody. And then, then, then you know what we start doing? We start thinking about leaving this world. All right, so you got to take them thoughts and remove them far from you. You understand? That's not of God. Like the brothers are bringing out. Rest with us in the scriptures. Come on. But here to stay and neither to eat nor drink. She said she won't going to do what? Neither to eat or drink. She said, I'm not going to eat nothing. I'm not going to drink nothing. What you think going to happen? If she, what you think going to happen to you if you don't eat or drink? For 20 days, for 30 days, for a year. What you think gonna happen to you? Four days now. What you think gonna happen if you if you do that same thing for four more days? You're gonna waste away. So what I'm trying to show you, you got a picture. It's, it's women in the scriptures that felt just like you. You understand? You can't allow yourself to waste away like that. It's other people that depend upon you in this world. They look up to you. You understand? If it had not been for you. They might be dead now. They might not have a chance to get their life right. You are their hope in this life. So you got to pull it together, sisters, people that depend upon you. Come on. But continually to mourn and to fast until I die. Wait, how long was she going to fast? But continually to mourn and to fast until I die. She said she was going to go to this field and she was going to mourn continually and not eat nothing. How long was she going to do it until when? 
until she died. You understand? Don't let this be you. You got to push that sorrow away from you. We know all lost people we care about. You understand? At a young age, some of us. Some of our mamas and grandmamas ain't lived to see 89 years old. You understand? When I was, my biological mom died when I was two. I was, she was 16 years old. You see that? So that's the same story as some of these brothers standing right before you. What if they said, when I found, what if they said, I think I, I can't live my life no more without my mom. I'm going to end my life. What do you think would have happened to their brothers, to their sisters, to their cousins? All the ones that depend upon them. What would have happened to them? They may have to seek to their enemies. You think, you want, you want your children to seek to their enemies because you chose to take the easy way out? That's what you want? No. Who they going to seek to if you're not here? Who they going to seek to? Your enemies. Right. The same ones that brought you over here. That make you work in this store that they own. You understand? And pay you peanuts. Then you pay taxes back to them. That's the life you want them to live for the rest of their life? Make it a little easier for them then. Show them the way. Don't give up. Come on. Then left thy the meditation wherein I was and spake to her in anger, saying... So guess what? A prophet came to this woman. What do you think that prophet told her? Get it together. But he said it a, a different way. He cut her to the heart. You understand? Read on. Thou foolish woman. Wait, what did he say? Thou foolish woman. It's a woman that's mourning. She just lost her son in a bed chamber. He's supposed to get married. He died. That's supposed to be the night you're supposed to be having as much sex in the world as you can. The night you get married, right? You're supposed to wake up. You can't even walk to the bathroom. You understand? Your abs hurt. Your chest. You understand? You know what I'm talking about. Right? That's how you're supposed to be on your wedding day. He's supposed to honeymoon it up. This man, this, this little, this, he died. He died on the happiest day of his life. And you hear what the prophet said to the woman? He said, you what? The foolish woman! But we're not going to say that to you. You understand? We're not going to say that to you. Because guess what? We're not built like we was built back then. Right. You understand? So we're not going to say that to you. But listen to what the prophet saying to this woman. He said, you a foolish woman. you about to kill yourself out here. Come on. The foolish woman above all other. Seest thou not? He said above all other. Ain't nobody on this world more foolish than you in this moment right here. Come on. Seest thou not? Our morning and what happened unto us. Don't, don't you see what happened unto us? Unto, don't you see what's happening to your people? What's happening to your people? Huh? What's happening to your people right now? Your people, the ones that live in Overtown, right over there. 36th Street. I hear they call it 36th Street. You understand? You see that? What's going on over there? Death. Death. Destruction. You understand? Death and destruction. What's happening in Chicago? Death. What's happening in Portsmouth? Death. What's happening in Roanoke? Death. What's happening in Danville? Read it out. What's happening in Richmond? Death everywhere. What's happening in Norfolk? Wherever we go, wherever we live, what's happening? Death, Death and destruction. Right. Murder. Death. You understand? Stealing. Adultery. That's happening everywhere we go. Wherever you find our people, you find what I just described. Right. So is that something worthy to mourn for? Yes, it is. We should be mourning very much so about that. Right. But the only time it really hit home for us is when? It's somebody in our family. It's somebody in our family. Because we don't see each other as what? Right. We don't see each other as what? Right. As family. We don't see each other as family. Right. right? It's the, we don't, we're not family until my actual you know, sister that I didn't grew up with and, you know, we didn't fought each other. I hated her my whole damn life. I probably ain't spoke to her in five years. You understand? But as soon as she get put to death, then I feel like I, I, it hurt. It hit, it hit right here. But what about all these niggas dying in these projects? What about all these women getting all my brothers locked up? I don't feel nothing, no type of way about that. Every, it's normal for me to see that. Right? We, we march when Trayvon get killed. We march when Oscar Grant get killed. We march when Tamir Rice get killed. Who killed them? Who killed them? The white man. But we march for that. What about all these Negroes, like Trey, killed right over there on, uh, 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 on 36? What about Trey? We don't march for that? Why? Because he was killed by who? Another black man. You understand? Another black man. We don't see each other as family. So this is what the prophet saying, what? Thou foolish woman. 
You selfish. You understand? You selfish. You're not considering everybody else, your people. You understand? Your pe- it's, 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 it's people on, it's crack vials over here. You understand? You, do people do crack in Newport News? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. You see what I'm saying? No question. It's crack vials over here. Yes, they do. They right? It's, it's, it's prostitutes walking up and down here. Heron users uh, around here. Right. What about our people that are suffering? Right? We know the white man brought the drugs and the guns to the neighborhood, but what are we going to do to fix our community? What are we going to do to fix our community? Because you know, because what we do is we spot them. We think we're doing them good when we give them $20. But you know they're going to take that $20 and do what with it? They're going to go get high. Right. That's what they're going to do with it. Yeah. So we're really not helping them when we go give them $20 because they they homeless out here. We got to teach them how to clean themselves up with the word of God. Come on. How? That Zion, our mother, is full of all heaviness. You see, you, you know who Zion is? That's the mother of all these black people you see out here. The mo- Jerusalem, the mother of us all. That's who we're reading about. This is a parable. You understand? It's speaking about the black man, the Native American man, the Hispanic man. You understand? The ones that that we hate, the ones that sell drugs right across the street from us. They got a cartel, and we, we stay away from them, and they stay away from us. Right. You understand? You, you ever been to California? That's how they get down out there, right? I was born in Philly, so I know. So you know what I'm talking about. All right, guess what? Hispanics and blacks are brothers. We got the same forefather. We all come from the same people. That's why we suffer the same afflictions on this earth. By example, nation is family. 